Hello and welcome once again to Living Supernaturally, our daily devotion where we take time to study the Word of God and to apply it in our lives. Um, if you look at the life of the Lord Jesus, the birth, life, um, what He did, the teachings, uh, almost everyone accepts uh, that as a historical fact. Um, it's not fiction, it's not a myth. The life of the Lord Jesus, the teachings of the Lord, and everyone agrees that agrees with that. But when it comes to the resurrection of the Lord, that is where there's a lot of uh, confusion, there's a lot of uh, disbelief, and so on in the world. Uh, today, we're going to look at um, some of the claims that people have against the resurrection. But the fact is that He is risen, and He is risen indeed. Uh, but we are going to look at some of these claims uh, against the resurrection. Okay. Uh, one claim is that the disciples, after the resurrection, or the so-called resurrection, they went to the wrong tomb. That they went to the wrong tomb, which was in fact empty, and uh, therefore they came to the conclusion that the Lord was risen. And so they went about telling everywhere that the Lord is risen, but in fact, that they went to the wrong tomb. Now that's, uh, that's, some, that's a claim that is against the resurrection. But the fact is this, that if they had done so, if they had indeed gone to the wrong tomb, all that the Jewish authorities and the Roman soldiers had to do was to present or direct the people to the right tomb and show that the body was still there. Right? So this claim doesn't hold good. The second claim against resurrection was the fact that uh, was, uh, was, a, was a claim that the body was in fact stolen. The body was stolen by the disciples and, uh, and, and therefore they went, after that they went ahead and said that the Lord was risen. But when we see that, uh, the, when we look at the disciples and how all of them fled at the time of persecution, at the time of um, the crucifixion, we see that these were the same disciples. Now these disciples um, who were cowardly, who were so fearful, could not have come back and fight and fought a battalion of 16 Roman soldiers who were trained in battle, who were battle strong, to come and fight them and steal the body. Uh, definitely they could not have overpowered a battalion of 16, um, definitely not these disciples. Right? So that claim also does not hold good. The third claim is that the Jewish or the Roman authorities, they moved the body for whatever reason. Right? They took the body, they hid it, uh, maybe they feared the disciples would come and do something. and So they moved the body, that is one claim. Well, the fact is the disciples were preaching, they were going around saying that uh, the Lord is risen. So again, all that, the all that the Roman authorities and the Jewish authorities had to do was to produce the body and say, you know, your claims are wrong, which they did not do. Another claim is that the disciples were probably hallucinating. All the events of, of whatever had happened was, was in their minds and probably they were just hallucinating. But the fact is, uh, quite contrary to this, because the Lord Jesus appeared to many disciples, many of them in different settings, um, after he was, uh, after he had risen. In fact, he ap appeared to the two who were on the road to Emmaus. He spoke to them. He, he uh, had a conversation with them. He ate with a group of disciples. He, in fact, allowed Thomas, the disciple, to touch his, uh, his nail print in hands and, this, and, the, and his side. And so none of this could be an illusion. Not in these different settings, uh, they, they could not have been hallucinating. So, so the truth is that the Lord Jesus did indeed rise from the dead. The resurrection, just like the birth and the life and the teachings of the Lord Jesus, the resurrection is a historical fact. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the life, for the teaching, for the death, the burial and the resurrection, O oh God. We thank you because of that we are born again. We thank you because of that our destinies, destinies are changed. And I pray, Father God, that this reality will be strong in, it, in, in us, that we will be established, firm and strong and unshakable in this truth 
that you rose again and experience the power of the resurrection in our own lives. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.